you all here uh, in the session where we will show you how props use this big theory and image recognition to get deeper creative insights in their platform. Uh, before we get started, a few points of housekeeping. Um, uh, there is a chat for this session that you can post um, your experiences with data warehouses in, for example. If you have dedicated questions to the panelists, we have a Q&A uh, function enabled for this webinar where you can drop your questions in. Um, we aim to have the webinar for, for about 60 minutes with a time slot at the end to answer some of your questions. Um, during the, the webinar, we also have uh, parts of the panelists who are just not actively talking at the moment to answer questions in, in the Q&A section there. So please feel free to just drop anything you want into that, into that box and we'll get back to you as much as we can. Um, and with that, let's go right into the topic and meet our panelists. And so I would like to ask our guests uh, for a quick round of introductions. Um, Oliver, why don't you start us out? Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Oliver Blodgett, and I am the co-founder and COO of Cross. Great, thanks. And Neil? Hello, everyone. Nice to meet everyone here today. Uh, my name is Neil Williams, and I'm the lead developer here at Props. Wonderful. And um, myself, I am going to be leading this session. I'm moderating uh, through, through the evening or morning, whatever your time zone is. I'm Bartosz Schneider. I'm leading the professional services team at Supermetrics and um, have been working with props on this great project um, that we will be presenting today. And with that, uh, let's talk about the agenda. So like I mentioned, we have a lot of uh, cool things to present for you today, hopefully. And first of all, we'll learn a bit more about uh, props and their platform uh, so that everyone kind of gets a level understanding of what we're talking about here. And then we'll kind of summarize the, the history of props, how they started and how it's going, basically, um, and how we helped them to get from an old data stack to what basically is powering uh, the platform today. Um, we'll also get into a bit of a technical detail there, but uh, we, we try to keep things simple so it won't be a, a tech babble webinar. Uh, we're really mostly focused on the solution and how, how you can learn from that and maybe replicate parts of it for your business if you're interested in those aspects. Um, and yeah, if you have any really uh, deepening questions that you want to have addressed, please drop them in the Q&A. We'll have to share more information about how you can gain more uh, information on everything presented later on at the end of the webinar too. Um, and so let's talk about props a bit. Um, so I would say like Oliver, what, how would you summarize your um, platform, your business in a nutshell in a few sentences? Who are your customers? What does your platform do? Okay, well, Props is a content marketing platform uh, that helps brands unlock new customers by publishing and promoting original content directly from their own websites. We work with real writers, photographers, filmmakers to reduce real, uh, real stories, uh, not branded content. This content is promoted with paid media for each content creator to unlock new audiences. The platform results are fully measurable and optimized with AI. And to give you a little idea of what the platform does, um, at a high level, it automates the process of advertising and driving sales through authentic content. So this would include recruitment, curation, and management of content creators, production of all content and promotional assets, such as the ads we use to promote the stories, the approval and compliance process, paid media promotion of the content, and integrated measurement, tracking, optimization, and reporting. Awesome. Um, so really, really covering the whole spectrum there. And um, since we're talking here in the context of uh, supermetrics, and uh, there is a history that we have together already, um, how, what, what, if you would summarize that in one sentence, um, how did you, how did you come to supermetrics? We have more detailed slides on that later on. So not an extensive uh, summary of all the technical details, but just like, how did we get started? 
Uh, so in 2019, we started working with the Supermetrics Google Sheets connector. And in 2020, we added the Supermetrics Data Studio connector. And then in the fall of 2021, we began working with the professional services team uh, to design and build the custom data warehouse. Great, yeah. Um, and I imagine that, that the, there is a certain progression throughout what you just said, right? So the Google Sheets into Data Studio into Data Warehouse. So um, the next, I know the net, our next slide is addressing kind of that before and after or what you had and what the vision was. So um, then we can go into more details. So th this is th that kind of the situation, right? Was that your reporting was on Google Sheets, but you also had um, bigger ideas. Uh, so what situation did you find yourself in? You said already that you're kind of Google Sheets reporting, maybe it was falling apart at that point, but how did we uh, get from Sheets to Data Warehouse and beyond? Yeah, so um, sort of around mid-2021, we found ourselves in a situation where we'd grown significantly as far as clients, and we really had gotten to a point where we couldn't really push Google Sheets any farther. And as you mentioned, uh, we had a lot more ambitious goals for what we wanted to do with our data in the future. And our current solution just couldn't, uh, couldn't handle uh, what we had currently running and definitely couldn't handle what we wanted to do in the future. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's also kind of how I re remember our first meetings. Um, so I know that you initiated the discussion about the data warehouse solution. I know with my former manager, uh, Andy Kozak, um, and then I ended up being the consultant working with you. Um, so how did you make the decision to go with uh, Supermetrics and professional services specifically? Uh, what expectations did you have for what we could build for you or deliver at the point when, you, when we kind of came together to start the project really? Well, as far as Supermetrics specifically went, uh, we talked to a, a bunch of different vendors and what we found was Supermetrics was really the only one that provided the um, depth and detail that we needed. Whereas there were a lot of vendors that were sort of a, a mile wide and an inch deep. Supermetrics was the only one that provided every single, um, every single results metric uh, that we wanted to leverage. And then as far as our, uh, what our goals were, um, we had a bunch of ideas about how we wanted to take sort of non-traditional categorizations of data and apply them to the traditional, uh, the traditional media metrics. So that included things like image categories, the topics of, uh, uh, the topics of our episodes or stories, um, our creators. And this type of categorization was really hard to do at scale. And then we also found that um, our current solution was only really useful for the purpose it was built for, which was displaying results on client dashboards. And we wanted something that was a lot more flexible um, and allowed us to use the data however we wanted. And the final thing I'll add is that we were running into a lot of problems with scalability. So it was a lot of effort to add in uh, new clients and our team was spending a significant amount of their day just making sure everything was working and everything was up to date. So that's really what prompted uh, the start of the work with the, uh, with the professional services team. All right, so maybe now that we've been mentioning the professional services team several times uh, and we, we promised the audience that this case is a special one, uh, I maybe like to introduce professional services to everyone here uh, just to mention because I know that we get that question a lot. So um, if you don't know, Supermetrics has a professional services team. I think by now it's clear since I am here presenting the webinar, uh, but what we do is really try our help help our customers get the solutions the analytic solutions the data solutions that they um, are looking for uh, we, we build them uh, so in props's case we started with 
I I remember when I when I joined the project and started we started talking. You showed me these um, it, quite impressive Google Sheets constructs that um, your analyst was maintaining every day. And I think what was it you said? How much time was he using on that uh, every day to to just run the reporting? Yeah, on certain days he could spend up to I mean six hours or more just making sure everything had pulled through correctly and that the the different sheets were were communicating properly and that the dashboard was actually running for the client. Yeah, yeah I, I could see that through with like a, my analyst I myself that was visible. And, I, and at, at, if we had been talking only about only in air quotes about um, upgrading that reporting and automating it, your case would have been one uh, that I see every day uh, and talking about uh, with our customers about the solutions that they're looking for when they uh, are looking at our data warehouse connectors from Supermetrics, for example, to BigQuery. Um, but then I know that you also had the bigger vision and the uh, the image a recognition AI inc inclusion into the data model was one of the main topics, I think, that we discussed back then. Um, and we will discuss that a bit uh i think in two slides we have the explanation of exactly what's going on there plus we have the demo of your platform coming up too um it's just i i remember that with this point like the excitement also on our side came uh, became really big uh, so far so that even our ceo uh committed to coding the solution for you and, and because we were interested in seeing how far we can push our own product um to really help you get that image recognition in um, but so suffice to say that we had those those parts of kind of upgrading and, and making your re existing reporting more scalable. And we also wanted to be able to unlock that potential for the enhanced features of uh, AI integration on the other side. Um, and at that point, like speaking about how the process went from, from my perspective is that we really went in and analyzed what you already had all the google sheets we took stock of all the metrics and dimensions that we needed to replicate into your data warehouse uh, then came up with a design proposal of basically how things could interact with each other in the data warehouse and then uh, agreed on on the plan to move forward um, and so i think that's the kind of the story of how you went from the google sheet to the data warehouse is that right yeah, absolutely. And um, the, the team was the team was great. You guys really, really zeroed in on what what we were looking to do with the visual recognition component, which is a, a lot of the categorizations we were able to sort of cobble together something that worked okay, but wasn't going to scale. But the visual recognition component, there was absolutely no way we could do do on our own without creating the, the custom connectors that you guys created. All right, and we'll take a look at the previous data architecture next, and then how it's looking right now to explain it a bit more with pictures. Uh, again, uh, I, I asked the audience to bear with us. Those, those schemas uh, are just here to illustrate kind of the, the problems. And we have a message in the chat uh, appreciating that our CEO took part in solving the problem. Um, Yes, if you would meet Mikael someday, you would know that he's very passionate about the product and still to this day a very hands-on guy. So he, uh, nothing gets him more excited than sitting down to actually um, build a solution uh, and and add a feature to it to the product. Um, so that was that was really exciting and still one of my favorite anecdotes from my time in Supermetrics. Um, and so we're looking at the the, the setup um, that we just mentioned now several times. I saw that there was also in the Q and A a question about how um, you guys were using Data Studio or Looker Studio uh, with Google Sheets together. But um, maybe you can, uh, Oliver, you can tell us a bit more about how, like, now the details. How did that workflow uh, actually work, and how was your reporting set up before we did the big jump? Yeah, of course. So basically, each client da dashboard was made up of multiple connected sheets that categorized and transformed uh, the data that was provided by the Supermetrics uh, connector. And it was broken up because, as you guys probably know, once you get to a certain amount of data, 
within a within a spreadsheet that starts slowing down and breaking. Uh, so we needed to divide that up. So in one sheet, we would take in the granular daily results and we would tag them based on uh, pretty much based on naming convention in a semi-automated way. But this again was very prone to human error. Uh, then we had another sheet that would roll up all these um, all the data based on these tags. And then a final sheet that transformed the data into tables that were ingestible by Looker Studio. And then the client had would see the um, the Looker Studio result that was um, that was embedded in our platform. So it was pretty much completely separate from the platform, and as I mentioned before, very prone to uh, very prone to error. And um, yeah, as, as Bartosz mentioned, uh, we have one member of our team who was dedicating almost six hours a day to maintaining the solution. Yeah, um, again, I was impressed with how much work you guys had put into those Google Sheets, um, uh, but it was also quite visible that it was, that is something, again, I want to stress that some, it's a typical uh, case that I see every day. Um, the hard truth is that at some point, the whole reporting setup on Google Sheets, it, it's um, not scalable enough. I think that's the best summary for it didn't scale well for your reporting needs uh, for the customer facing reports and it, for sure it didn't scale well for your uh, more ambitious goals of integrating um, additional enhancements and so then oh so, yeah the, yeah the only thing I, I would add there is it was it was doable based on the naming convention to identify hey this ad is for uh, for a certain creator, and we could get results based on that creator. But things like what actual image creative was being used, there was no way for us to do any sort of roll up and look at global results by that um, by that type of imagery, which is obviously very much a driver of performance um, and something we were we were really looking for a solution to allow us to do. Yeah, and speaking of the solution, um, this is what we ended up building, right? Um, so I, I'll try to, I'll cover the supermetric side. We agreed on that beforehand. And then Neil will talk about what's happening on the prop side, so the right side of the, of the chart. Um, and you will see that that might look intimidating, but it, it, we have a demo uh, coming up that we pre-recorded where Oliver is showing exactly how that actually comes to life in, in, in showing the platform. Um, but if you're interested in seeing how the components work together, this is the chart for you. Uh, so coming from the left side, uh, it's similar to the, the Google Sheet setup where the Supermetrics product is bringing in data from various data from various platforms into storage. In the previous setup, the storage has been the Google Sheet. Now we are transferring the data into BigQuery. Those transfers run uh, on a schedule, automated once per day, and bring in all the connected information from uh, performance of ads from across all the platforms uh, that Props is running on. And in BigQuery, we have, as part of the project, we have built a integrated data set. So we take the data from the platforms, we extract information from, for example, your naming conventions that you mentioned, uh, information on episode creator, etc., uh, from the ad um, IDs itself to create dimensions that are post and av available for roll up or filtering in reporting. Um, that data and BigQuery is also feeding your in the internal reporting at props for business uh, intelligence uh, that is hosted on Tableau. And this um, division AI component that you see here looping over a BigQuery is the part that the RCO coded, uh, which is um, a pipeline where the data on image creatives are passed in a prototype. It was passed through the Google Vision AI service which has an, inside the Google Cloud, it has an API. You can send it an image, let it process that image and output labels for it. And so our product integrated this pathway through this prototype, in the prototype through this um, Vision AI API inside Google Cloud. And 
output the data into the big query tables that we have running in the data warehouse. Um, in the future, we have a, a bit on the future plans next with a uh, custom model uh, for the image recognition, but this is how it uh, was set up in the uh, in the beginning. And then also during the build of the project, we discovered that there was a need for the creation of a supermetrics custom connector to actually extract data from props into BigQuery, since I think Neil will mention that in, in, in explaining that part on the, on the right hand side, Props' platform is running on Bubble, uh, a, a low code uh, app uh, platform, and that has its own storage and its own databases. And there was, we needed to extract certain information on the creators um, from there and bring it into the data warehouse in order to enrich the data um, that we had there with those bits. Uh, and so we set up and created a custom connector for that. Uh, and this is also running into BigQuery. And now Neil, um, maybe the guy who built it should explain uh, what he has built and you know it best. So what's going on on the side, on the prop side of things here? Yeah, thanks Bartro. So as Bartro mentions, um, the prop platform is built on Bubble, which is a no code, low code um, tool that allows us to build full-fledged applications enterprise level. Um, and essentially what we have here is for our content, we have two parts. We have the content that we then post onto the different social media sites, but then we also have our data. And the data that we also have contains things like the natural language AI. And what that essentially consists of is running through Google's AI, we take our content and then receive um, particular information about, about the data there. So we, we then can see the information and it has a bunch of different categories. Um, also, we have the Hemantic AI, which pertains to our creators, which is a persona that allows us to create uh, categorizations and details about particular creators. And that then gives the team and the clients um, informed decisions on who to use in the future. And with that information, as Bartros mentioned, we then, uh, that data is then passed back into with the super connector that then combines the data from our, uh, into our BigQuery uh, uh, media warehouse. Yeah, so uh, in, a, in a nutshell, it's a, a bunch of data pipelines going back and forth and three AIs competing for attention in this thing. Uh, it's, it's really, um, it's really one of the most advanced um, setups that I've seen integrating many components across different platforms. But essentially, um, as the chart also suggests, the, 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 you call it media warehouse. Uh, it's a good name for that, what we've built there. The data warehouse here is powering, kind of sitting in the center and powering, uh, enabling all the components there and serving the data. And so to kind of finally get across what this is looking like, what the props platform really looks like, uh, we will now start the demo. Um, you will hear Oliver talking, but you cannot ask him questions because he pre-recorded the session, so we avoid technical issues. Uh, of course, please keep uh, posting questions in the QA and in the chat as you've already been doing so. Um, this is really great. And let me just do some admin stuff here on the side so I can launch the video. Uh, this will just take a second. And you should be now seeing the video and I'm launching the demo. Hi everyone, welcome to the demo section of the webinar. At a high level, our platform facilitates the process of advertising and driving conversions through authentic content. But part of the platform that we don't have time to cover in detail today does a few things. First, it allows the client to select creators as well as topics they would like to move forward with. Next, it streamlines the production of an episode. And when we refer to an episode, we mean a photo essay, a blog post, a video, a podcast, or any other um, type of content the creator produces. So you can see here what the creator uploaded, images, videos. And then finally, it 
automates the production of the actual ad assets that will be used to promote the episode. So we then use these episodes as the main vehicle to drive sales for our clients. So diving right in, we're gonna start with the client headquarters. The client headquarters is a place our clients can go to get general information on performance, what episodes they have running, uh, and any tasks they have to complete. It starts out with this utilization bar up top where we're looking at number of episodes produced and how many are currently live. And then we do a calculation based on past performance uh, to highlight if they use more of their episodes, how much additional uh, revenue could they generate. Below that, we have a section about the top performing episode and clients can click through the episodes they have running. Uh, it combines the beautiful imagery that comes from our platform and information on the creator, and it matches that up with data pulled from the Supermetrics data warehouse. So you can see for each one of these, we have different performance, different imagery, uh, different descriptions. You can also click out from here and see what an actual episode might look like on the client site. So below this, we have a timeline. And what this timeline does is give clients a high level view of all the creators they've worked with in the past and how successful each one was. So you can see here, we have a bunch of different creators in the very beginning. And depending on performance, you see some taper off, some expand, new episodes get injected partway through the year. And you can actually go in and you can follow one creator. So this one here is Poppy Almond, this episode here. And you can see that she started off pretty light, but towards the middle of the year was expanded dramatically. And then as new episodes due to seasonality or whatever other reason were added, she started to taper off. So next we're gonna head over to our main performance dashboard. And when we were putting this performance dashboard together, we wanted to accomplish a few things. First, we wanted to provide accurate and clear data to the clients. Second, we wanted to integrate all the beautiful creative uh, on the props platform. And we wanted to do this so we could engage everybody on our client teams, not just those focused on analytics. Third, we wanted to surface all of the AI driven insights that we've developed in a way that was easy for the client to consume. And lastly, we needed uh, our team to be able to set up these dashboards without having to interact with SQL queries. So coming back to the dashboard, we start with our headline up top where we highlight creative and creators and how they're doing individually. And we have in big bold letters here, the, uh, the main KPI for the client. Following that, we have the section where the client's gonna find the majority of the detail around their campaign. And as you can see up here, we have different segmentation views. Uh, this client, we only have by objective, which is conversion or traffic campaigns and blended. Um, but some of our clients will have breakouts by geography or breakouts by uh, platform. Down here, we have the top three metrics that we wanted this client to see. And if you click here, we can expand and get a little more detail. The graph below, changes based on which metric you select. And the view of the graph can be changed as well. So we have daily, seven day moving average to get more of the trends and then running average to see where the campaign is as a whole. And one thing to note here that we were very excited about is doing this was very difficult when we were leveraging Data Studio because of how slow the changes were to load. And now that we have the Supermetrics uh, data warehouse, everything is very quick. Below this, we have a section highlighting the top performing episodes similar to on the client headquarters. So next we come to the AI Insights section of the dashboard. And we have three main areas that we're working with here. First is creator archetypes which is a personality analysis that is done on writing samples from each of the creators when they sign up for props. 
Second is image recognition, which is the custom connector that Supermetrics set up that processes each individual image or creative that goes out through the ad platforms. And third is subject matter, where we analyze the subject matter of each episode and assign it a category. So as you can see down below, this is represented by a tree map. And each creator personality type is on here. And right now we are looking at amount spent. So you can see that the creator personality type spent significantly more than ruler who came in dead last. If we bounce over to subject matter, we're still looking at amount spent and we can see that this client has spent the most on episodes relating to health and beauty and fitness. And we can go in here and switch to website purchases to sort of analyze the performance. And again, the reason they were spending the most there is because these have been most successful. So you can see that topics such as hobbies and leisure or home and garden perform significantly less than health and booty and fitness. And then finally, we have the image recognition. So it's taken the hundreds or maybe even thousands of images that have gone out through various ad platforms and categorized them. Then we've combined all that performance. And so we can see that images in the fashion category have pulled in significantly more purchases than images in the text category. Text being uh, ad creative that has a lot of text across it or sort of dominated by it. And what we do with these three is we are able to, to go to the, the client and say, you should be working with creators of X personality. You should be leveraging images of Y type and you should be writing episodes on Z topic. So here we have our results by ad section and this section allows the client to get a much more granular view of what's driving their performance. They have a preview of the actual ad creative here and when they click through they can see the results for individual ads over here. Just as on the top when you click on individual metrics, the graph below will update to represent that metric. Below that, we have our results by creator section. And this section is interesting because it is combining data from both Google Analytics and the various ad platforms. Here we have a list of all the creators that are running and we can adjust what metric we're ranking them by. So right now it's amount spent. We could look at it by CTR. And then when we click on the individual creators, we will see the demographic data for that creator update right here. So that concludes the performance dashboard. Now we're gonna move along to the reporting section. So as we move over to the reporting section, I just wanted to point out where the data warehouse is touching even the most simple parts of the platform. So here we have a list of the client's episodes. We're pulling in amount spent on every one of them. We're tagging which episodes are currently actively being promoted. And we even have popped sort of mini dashboards on the profile page for each individual creator. So you can get de details on how that creator alone is doing. So the last section we'll review is our report builder, which we just launched. And what we were trying to do here was to give the team the ability to send the more traditional regular reports, but not have to recreate them from scratch every week and not have to pull in numbers manually. So if we jump into a report here, we can see this is very similar to a traditional slide deck. We can edit everything. We can change the background images. But the unique part is that in addition to being able to edit the text, we can add in metrics that will be dynamically changed based on the date range. So for example, for our most recent campaign, the cost per click was, and I'll drop into my variable builder here. I'll select cost per click from Facebook, and I'll create that variable. Now that variable is available to me throughout the report. I can paste it in there. 
I can even format it differently. And when I preview it, that number is automatically pulled from the data warehouse. And every time this report is published, it will update to the date range set by the team. So back over here on the editor, we also have the ability to automatically create graphs. And what we do is we just select our metric. We'll do CPC again. Select Facebook. Seven day running average. And we'll throw a benchmark in of $1. That graph is automatically generated in a moment's time. And then the last thing I'll show you here is the content review component. So this section automatically creates reviews for each creator, pulls in all the metrics and all of the information on the creator and the episode. So you can see how this, if you're producing these reports on a regular basis, say weekly or monthly or even quarterly, this very quickly becomes hundreds of variables that would need to be manually adjusted. But with the report builder, we can build it once, then you can recreate it for a new date range, make some slight modifications, and you're off to the races. So that concludes the product demo. Uh, looking forward to answering any questions you guys might have in the Q&A session. Thanks for your time. So I, I can't help but smile every time I see this because it's really exciting uh, to see what you've built there. Uh, and the report builder is really creating gorgeous um, paper reports. Uh, I know that many other clients of mine would be very excited to have something similar. Um, but so that's, that's really the summary of what uh, Props has created there and based on this um, BigQuery setup and how far we've got uh, so until today from where we started. I know that there is a few questions in the Q&A and Neil has been busy answering them. I also um, answered a few. Um, we'll get back to that in the Q&A session at the end, of course, if anything uh, is open right now. Um, but then, so we are now at this stage with props, um, but what, What's next for you guys? Um, you've, I'm, I'm sure you're not done yet um, with, with, with the vision and the setup so far. So maybe Oliver, um, can you walk us through the next maybe top three things? I know that the slide is giving them away already, but uh, just maybe explain it in your own words a bit. Yeah, of course. So we, we've got a list um, about a mile long of, uh, of different things we want to do with the data. But uh, so the top three right now, uh, are first adding detail, uh, detailed audience analysis uh, to our data warehouse. So what we mean by that is we want to move beyond uh, just sort of the manual and broad definition of, of a targeting audience. And we'd like to leverage supermetrics and natural language understanding to transform all this sort of granular detail you put into the settings when a media professional is setting up a, a campaign and turn them into usable dimensions so we can analyze performance by uh, audience specifics. Uh, so that's pretty high up there. Uh, we're also working hard on expanding our offering for advertising agencies. So the majority of, of Prop's clients today are direct relationships with the brand. Um, and then we work sort of side by side with their advertising agency. So we're current and we're, what we're doing is we're currently piloting a solution that is for a direct relationship between props and, um, and an advertising agency. And so this involves making the platform friendlier to a, a user who's going to be running a lot of different clients. So that means new dashboards, um, a new sort of permissions layer. And then eventually we'll also want to create a simple way for them to integrate their, uh, their other initiatives with their clients 
uh, into our data way at warehouse because we'd like props to really be the unified dashboard that they 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 turn to. And then the final thing on this list is the uh, visual recognition 2.0. And what we're looking at doing uh, there is right now we we put together a pretty general um, a pretty general visual recognition model, and it has it works very well, but it has, definitely has limitations. So the next version is going to be a uh, a set of multiple custom models that are a lot more specific, and we think that will will drive more insights. So these custom models, one might be analyzing, okay, what's this? What's the setting of the creative? One might be analyzing um, uh, what are, what are the subjects of of the imagery, while another might be looking at color and tone. Um, so we think that from our experiments, we think that uh, separating these out into much more focused groups uh, will give us uh, a lot better results there. So, sounds really exciting. Um, and I know that uh, I'll be, I hope, I guess I know that I will be involved in some of that um, and expansions of the day to house since we're, um, I forgot to mention that before explicitly, we're still working on this, uh, right? So. Uh, the cooperation uh, between you guys and us has not ended with this build. We are um, still uh, maintaining and building and expanding the data wells together, which makes me um, very happy to see how far we've got so until today. Um, and with that, I, I would like to maybe summarize for the general audience kind of here, because we've seen now Props' progression from um, the spreadsheet uh, reporting setup to really a full-fledged productized data platform, uh, if you could call it that. And maybe if you're if you're sitting in this webinar and are wondering, um, you want to do something similar, where do you start? Uh, I've tried to kind of come up with a progression uh, or a suggestion on how to get started and grow your data warehouse. And we're using the imagery of growing a seed here uh, because it really can be that uh, at, at the end, it can be a huge tree if you allow that image that can bear fruits um, for you to pick. And I mentioned this earlier, um, many customers approach us uh, when they are outgrowing their current reporting solution. And the current reporting solution can be Google Sheets, Excel, um, Looker Studio, maybe a combination like, like Props was using before. And there are natural breaking points to those tools when you need to start looking for a more scalable solution. Be it that your vision for reporting increases or you simply have too much data uh, to contain and keep it in a spreadsheet. Um, at some point, almost everyone will have to look at uh, what's the next step. And for the next step typically is a data warehouse because it just offers the, the scalability and the, the, uh, the options to go beyond what was possible so far. So my initial rec re recommendation to those cases is really whatever you have in a Google Sheet can work in the same form in a data warehouse only better than unlock potential. So it's improving, like replicating the current things, improving on un unblocking uh, the long loading times, get rid of that. Already that is for many of our customers, it's like the, the added value that motivates them to um, make this step forward into data warehousing. But then once you have that running and you maybe are happy with uh, your, your breezing fast dashboards and whatnot, um, the next step for in progressing that is really to now that you have all that power, what to do with it, right? Um, and some of the points that we also, at which we also recommend our customers to consider data warehousing is, for example, when the, um, the problem that you want to solve requires a complex solution. Um, one of my favorites and the, the one that comes up very often is marketing attribution. And you can do last click attribution like models in a spreadsheet by kind of doing a VLOOKUP and letting the spreadsheet process the data for you so you can kind of assign conversions to the marketing campaigns that drove them. But essentially, it, again, you will run into the same speed bumps uh, and, and points where scalability becomes an issue. And so really explore the next advanced analytics steps for your reporting if you come from there. Um, 
examples could be really that the availability of granular data. Uh, props is analyzing the data on individual ad creative level now. So um, A-B testing ad creatives against each other becomes super simple if you can store and process the data for that task in a data warehouse um, at scale across um, many accounts too and platforms. Or uh, another unlocked potential would be um, getting into predictive analytics, marketing mix modeling, when the data is in an environment like a data warehouse, scalable cloud infrastructure, those things become um, much lower hanging fruits than before. So it's like really unlocking the key, being the key that unlocks the door to all those uh, fancy new applications. And, and of course, um, you don't have to do things manually anymore because in a data warehouse, the data transformations that in a Google Sheet are individual formulas across uh, columns or um, single dashboard definitions where you have calculated fields in a Looker Studio dashboard. Data Warehouse in integrates those as logic coded in SQL, um, which makes it the maintenance, the uh, being at the single source of, of data and truth much more like, available at scale, uh, unlocking further potential. And then once you have ticked that box and you want to uh, move on to the next step is really um, serving the data to different destinations from the data warehouse uh, is something that many people like if you don't have that infrastructure, it might be that you're not even aware that this is possible. Um, and kind of we see that how props did it because the the data from BigQuery is coming going back into the platform and is being displayed in, in dashboards and informs um, marketing decisions and gives overview on, on performance. Uh, the other topics that you could look at then are, for example, reverse ETL processes that take data from the data warehouse and put it back into CRM systems like Salesforce um, to enrich customer data there. Or um, you can use insights that you mine from there across like benchmarking information and use it in marketing automation systems. So really feeding back the data and the insights into systems that then can make use of it and influence uh, how you do business. And so there's a lot of potential for automation and, and growth. And last but not least, like finally we saw like how props build a product around it and really productized and, and, and created value out of data for their customers. And Many other um, industries or companies can do the same. Uh, I, I've, I see a lot of marketing agencies that kind of come with the ambition to to, uh, to the table that they want to um, make data and the quality of their reporting a selling point for them for their agency business. Uh, so that's the recurring theme that you make you, you create the data platform and infrastructure with the idea to make money out of it right in the end everyone's doing business so it's uh, it's close thought to do that um but for example also if you're an e-commerce um platform and you are uh, uh, an online shop you want to make use of data in a data warehouse to uh, fuel your product and get an edge over competition things like uh, data products like a recommendation system based on data warehouse are um of possibilities or um, real-time website elements based on kind of mapping customer uh, to an existing um, record in a data warehouse. All, all are possible things at that point. So it really then informs longer-term business strategy once you have the platform and the know-how to um, get to that point. So at this point, I just want to say like, if you want to start this journey uh, at any point, if you are at the small tree level and you think, yes, I want to grow the big tree and earn the fruits, um, we're happy to, to um, get in touch. Um, supermetrics can fuel those uh, ambitions. And, and we, as we see with props, uh, create something beautiful with the, with the help of our product. So um, there will be a poll coming up uh, now then in the chat that you can use to um, send us a request or file, fill a questionnaire so that we can get in touch with you if you're interested in a demo. Um, of our product, uh, sales will reach out to you then. And um, with that, we will also follow up by email um, after this webinar to everyone who signed up for this. 
and then finally it's time and we made good time although we only have eight minutes left so maybe i was talking a bit too long but uh we can go to the q a but don't worry if your question won't get an answer today here um i want to invite you to pipe that question into our uh, supermetrics community on slack too we will provide a link to join that community in the chat now there it is um so please uh, join us there i'll be hanging around in the community for sure and answer questions and i can a lot of other as experts are there too that can answer at least the questions around supermetrics for you there and um, since we are short on time, I will do a quick review of whatever we have in the QA sessions uh, section and see if I can spot something interesting for Oliver to answer. Uh, because I know that a lot of people were um, very interested in your platform too. So uh, let me see. Uh, Oliver, if you see something you want to answer, also please feel free to just jump on it. Um, I, I, there's one question that's not related to props, but I, how long did the change from sheets to this setup take? Um, that I can answer quickly. The, the initial setup phase to get the, 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 the basic components running so that the data warehouse was up and running and usable took a couple of weeks. Um, but the rest of the process, since I said we are still working on it, uh, took a bit longer because we were um, iterating on the solution. So the, the custom connector, for example, um, needed some development, but then we got that in and the data was flowing all right. Uh, and we're just making like tunings and adjustments to some naming conventions and extractions and KPIs during the thing. But the, the process to kind of release uh, the analyst from his daily duties, uh, I think was four weeks, I would say, well, maybe my, my memory is uh, betraying me, but I, it was not like, a forever project for sure. Um, then what else do we have here? Another question, how long, how long did it take? So that was answered. Um, I know that uh, Neil, you were also busy answering some of the questions and now they're gone. So uh, there was a question, but maybe Oliver wants to answer this. What's the initial reaction to if your clients when they uh, see your platform and the features there? Uh, well, they've been, they've been absolutely thrilled, and I think it's it's on a few different few different levels. Uh, they're very excited about the about the dashboard. Um, a lot of them say it's it's the most unique or best media dashboard they've they've come across, which we we love to hear. But also just the uh, the resiliency of the uh, of the data warehouse, um, the fact that it's always up, never has any errors, uh, just gives them a lot of confidence, which is which is obviously great. That's, um, I'm happy to hear that. Um, yeah, awesome. Like, I know like we had the session in preparation of the webinar internally at Supermetrics and when like members of our marketing team saw the demo that you ran, it was just like uh, astonished. Uh, it was, it's always the same. Um, then there is a, a question came in here um, that is asking whether you're operating only in the US or also Europe. Currently, we're operating only in the US, but there we have. Uh, we'd be very open to uh, to working with clients in Europe. That's great. I think many people will be excited. Um, and then your question just came in that I can take, how do we contact Supermetrics to make a personalized project together? Um, there is a form on our website. There is a pay landing page for professional services uh, that you can um, find and uh, send a request through that. Um, of course, if you have, uh, if you're already in contact with a sales rep or a customer success manager, um, you can go through them. They know exactly what we can and can't do, and they will be able to help you with that. Um, getting the request to my desk or my team's desk for sure. Um, uh, I know that there have been questions that Neil, you had one that were uh, was about the uh, enrichment pipelines. I think me, I don't, I didn't see how much you answered there already, but uh, maybe you want to drop. There was a question, and I think at the very start, it talks. It asked about 
The, um, can you talk a little more about the categorization workflow? I'm not sure if they're referring to, I guess you could speak more on the, the image recognition and we can talk about the, um, the AI components for natural language and humantic. Yeah, um, in our case, and there was also a question about the um, uh, AI feature in the Supermetrics product, how to get to the available, like, like how to get access to that. Um, in the form that uh, we have it now, it's more like a proof of concept beta phase. So you can get results out of it, but it's using, um, it's really on the, on the way of, of getting the data, for example, from Facebook ads into the, the big view data warehouse. Our integration works that in the way that since we don't store uh, the data uh, on the way, so Supermetrics is not running a hidden data warehouse before we output the data to your destinations, which is just being processed on the fly. So our connector from Facebook ads requests the data from there with the image URLs, and then those image URLs are passed to the Google Vision AI API uh, like I said, that categorizes that image, outputs the labels, and we take that um, on processing. We take that data bit and, and pipe it through to BigQuery. So the pipeline there is really for labeling the individual image and per, doing it per row of data uh, so that we land that in BigQuery already enriched with columns in the table that contain the labels. Um, and so, Neil, how, how are you doing the magic inside Bubble? Yeah, it's very similar. Um, so we are using uh, basically the natural language API and we're enriching the data that we are storing on the platform itself. And then with the help of Supermetrics connector, that data is then being sent from end platform to the data warehouse in BigQuery. Yep, that's pretty smart setup that we got there and running, right? Um, there was a question uh, regarding, are you currently hiring? And uh, Joseph from Props has answered it. If you wanna have the answer from, from Supermetrics, it, it, it's not clear which company was, uh, was, was the person asking for. Uh, Supermetrics <laughs> is also still hiring. Uh, I know that for a fact that we currently have solution engineer positions open. So, and there will be more coming up in the next uh, year or so. So definitely uh, always keep an eye on the career pages. Um, we are definitely looking to for new colleagues all the time. And with that, we just hit the 60 minute mark. Um, it's time to wrap up, I believe. So thanks for everyone for attending. Thanks for uh, all the questions. And most of all, thanks Oliver and Neil for this beautiful webinar and sharing your exciting story with us. Thank you very much for joining. It's been our okay. pleasure. Pleasure was on our side. Thanks a lot. And with that, I declare the webinar finished. Thanks <laughs> a lot. <laughs>